Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Code Man Movies. I apologize for how long it's been since the last video. I think it's been two weeks. Things have been crazy. I'm planning for my vacation, working a lot, uh, working extra than usual. Chester's currently drinking water and he's been, he hasn't been quite himself. He's been on anxiety medication. Um, he's meeting with a trainer next Saturday. Uh, he's been a little weird. He's not been himself. They're also taking blood work on Tuesday. So Chester's been a little strange. Things have been a little wacko tobacco. Um, life has just been crazy. Hasn't it, Chester? Yeah. He also doesn't like going out for strolls anymore. Like, we, we just tried literally before this, and he made 10 feet, and he went, and I want to go back inside. So, he's been acting weird, but he'll get better. It, it'll change. It'll be fun. Right. Right, bud. Yeah. It'll be all right. Anyways, guys, um... It's time to talk some stuff here. Um, we have quite a bit of stuff that we're going to talk about today. Well, I'm going to talk about today. You guys should talk about it. You should comment and all that fun jazz and like and share. I don't All that fun stuff. You should do that. Um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff we're going to talk about today. Um, mostly new stuff. New stuff that has recently came out that I have been able to watch and such. So that is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, grab your beverages. Today, it is, it's 10 o'clock in the morning where I'm at. So I'm definitely not drinking alcohol. I'm just drinking... A nice um, milk, almond milk is what I drink. And it's delicious and nutritious and blah, 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 blah. But anyways, guys, let's get into starting to talk about movies and TV shows and such like that. Starting with e the Smartless on the Road uh, six-part documentary series on Max now. Um, I really enjoy the Smartless podcast. I think it's all three of these men, Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and uh, uh, Sean Hayes, uh, all three of them are really funny. It's really fun just, just listening into a conversation, essentially, that they're having with other people. It feels like you're just a part of the group when you do listen to their podcast. Um, and I would have loved to have gone to one of their shows. The closest one for me would have been either Madison, Wisconsin, or Chicago, um, it, it would have been last year too, and I, I didn't get to go. I that's when I was bar manager. I didn't get days off, um, so yeah, it just wasn't gonna happen. Would have loved to though. I would have absolutely have loved to have went to one of these live shows to have seen this. Um, like I said, I love the podcast. I I love all three of these gentlemen, and this is really cool how they. They filmed this documentary, essentially, of them on the road doing this stuff um, for many different reasons. The first thing I, I really have to say about this is this really showed how the tour life cannot exactly be the most fun thing in the world. Um, it shows them getting on planes quite a bit. It shows them on buses. It shows them in cars. It shows them... Yes, in these big hotel rooms, but it also shows them, you know, away from their family. It shows them kind of being bored in these hotel rooms at times, just overly exhausted. Miley Cyrus just announced that she doesn't really want to tour anymore because she hates the road life. This, this sh shows you that it's not exactly that great or glamorous. Uh, and it kind of felt like by the end of this, that the Smartless crew are, are not ever going to do this again, which is understandable. It, it, it's just a lot. It takes a lot. While it also does show the fun aspects of it, though, too, is three friends hanging out for, you know, months, you know, a bunch of time. Uh, but it also kind of just shows that it, it's not exactly fun being on tour. Um, what I really also loved about this, I liked, I didn't think I was going to love the black and white for this. I didn't think there was a purpose to it. it I kind of do like it. it. It feels, I don't know. I don't know why the black and white was such a good choice, but it really was such a great choice to have it in black and white. It, it added something to it um, that I really enjoyed. There was also a particular episode that I really enjoyed. I believe it was three or four and it was just the three of these guys talking about their childhood. 
And it's really interesting to see different perspectives that they had. Uh, Jason Bateman is a child actor. Um, and it was really interesting to hear that, like, he constantly felt pressured to do good at his job because his family needed him to, to do good at his job, essentially. Like, he helped bring in money, essentially, as a child, which is crazy. Um, and then Will Arnett was in Canada, and he, he sounded like he was fairly privileged. Nothing too crazy. He wasn't a rich, spoiled brat, but he, he lived a good childhood. And then you had Sean Hayes, who had nothing. Had absolutely nothing. Father ran out on him. Um, mom was working multiple jobs. And Sean Hayes said specifically how, like, uh, I don't know if he said it in this documentary. He said it in another interview. Or maybe he was even on the Spartanless podcast. He talked about how he likes to eat so much now because as a kid, he, he didn't know when he was going to eat next necessarily. And it also talked about how some days he went without lunch, which is just crazy. Um, it, I really enjoyed that entire aspect of it. And I liked that this essentially... I, I have a friend, for example. If you talk about something depressing, he gets very uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable. He's like, whoa, whoa, we're having a good time here, guys. Let's, let's not talk about this. This right here, this scene from this documentary showed there's nothing wrong with talking about the past, talking about bad things. It, there's nothing wrong with it. it. And the way that these three gentlemen just talked about their past, it was wonderful. It was, it was kind of a beautiful moment. They were laughing about it. They were, they were talking about it. They were therapisting themselves, I guess you could say. They were going, hey, this is probably why I do this. This is probably why I act like this. This is why I say these things. And I think that is a very important thing for people to see. And I absolutely honor, I, I just think that is so fantastic that they put that into this documentary. Um, another thing I specifically want to talk about too is uh, there was a couple shows they did on this tour where they brought in I forget who it was because it's funny because I, in these shows, they brought in people like a scientist or a, a college professor or somebody like that who was talking about AI and people were literally leaving this show because they weren't interested. They wanted, you know, Matt Damon or something like that. I find that just crazy to me that people drove out for hours to see these guys and didn't even listen to what their guest had to say what they what their conversation was i don't care about harvard professors or anything like that either but that person in that 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 episode was talking about like ai and i was kind of interested in it. i would have liked to have heard more um i'm not gonna lie when i on smart lit when i'm looking listening to the podcast there are weeks where i have skipped because i didn't know who the name was that's not something I'm doing anymore because this was such an interesting conversation about AI. Was it the funniest thing in the world? Was it talking to Matt Damon or, you know, Ben Affleck? No, but it was really an interesting conversation. The fact that people got up and left and, like, you saw you saw clips in this of people going, I'm really disappointed, literally saying to their faces, I'm disappointed, I drove three hours for this. That was stupid. And that's just, I just can't believe how disrespectful and rude people can be to people because they didn't get what they want. And at the end of the day, the show, what they showed from clips of that show was still really interesting. I really enjoyed what they were doing. I enjoyed their chemistry. And that's the greatest thing I can say about these three. These, these three just have such great chemistry together and they clearly are friends. They clearly... They do. They love each other at the end of the day. They, they're they such great, happy people, and it. I just don't understand why people would do that. Um, but yeah. All in all, guys, this is just really... If you're a fan of this podcast, this is something really cool to check out. Um, if you're a fan of these actors at all, I would check this out. It just... And also, what I really like about this, too, is it just shows that celebrities are still people. And we need to treat them as people. And, it, yeah, just so many, uh, there's so many moments that help you see that. 
Um, one of my favorites in particular was when they did go to Madison, Wisconsin, and they were walking out on a frozen lake, and they were just, uh, Sean Hayes in specific, specifically was like freaking out. He's like, is this safe? This doesn't feel safe. We're all gonna die. The, 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 he's just freaking out over walking on ice, and someone who comes from Wisconsin, I just found that hilarious. So you guys, this is, this is a very funny little behind the scenes. It does have heart, surprisingly. It does show many different things. And I, I found myself really enjoying this. Again, I am a fan of the Smartless podcast. So I was just going to probably like this period. I'm also a fan of the actors. I was probably gonna like this period, but I thought this was really pretty solid. Um, Honestly, I feel like it could have been more. I wish we had more with it. Um, it kind of essentially gave us like an episode per city that they went to. I wish we could have gotten more, maybe two episodes per city. I don't know. That would be my biggest negative. I felt like there was stuff that we weren't seeing still. We got a lot in here, but I, I wish we could see more. Um, and I hope these guys go on tour again. I hope what happened with this last tour and people walking out and stuff and being buttheads has not change their mind on wanting to do this because um, I would definitely love to try to go you know if they came somewhere close to me I that would be the problem is you know maybe come to Charlotte two hours away I can handle that I'd go I'd go but yeah guys Smartless I'll give this one like a nine out of ten this is really an enjoyable little docu-series if, it, honestly if you just want to watch something with friends it just it's got a lot of heart to it and I really enjoy it quite a bit Ah, chicken nugget. Guys, I hate technology. Why aren't you working? Ah, figured it out. Next up, guys, Becky. Um, I watched this movie because I had no clue that a sequel came out to this. Uh, I went on Regal and saw that this movie called Wrath of Becky was in theater, so I went and saw it. And the movie started, and I went, holy cow, is this a sequel to Becky? So I will talk about Wrath of Becky in a second. But we're going to talk about the first Becky first. Uh, this movie came out in 2020. Yes, Close to the Dragons Digital. It came out in 2020, um, during the pandemic. And I remember seeing it at home and going, this is kind of a fun movie. Is it anything spectacular? No. But it's kind of Home Alone, just really freaking violent and crazy. Um, if you don't know what this movie's about, essentially this group of neo-Nazis, led by Kevin James, uh, comes to this house where this girl and her family is staying and things go crazy from there. This movie is very violent. It is gory. It is crazy. Um, it's brutal. And it really is kind of just an adult home alone is essentially what this movie is. You don't understand a lot about the characters or anything like that, why they're doing the things they're doing necessarily, but it's adult home alone. That's really all I can say about it. Again, nothing spectacular, nothing crazy, but it's a little girl beating up neo-Nazis. That's kind of freaking cool, in my opinion. Um, I remember the time that I watched this, I had a roommate that caught a couple minutes towards the end of this movie. And he went, okay, no, that's not right. That little girl murdering people like that, no, that, that's not okay. And he left. He could not, he literally was disturbed by it. He was literally insulted by it I guess you could say he wasn't he wasn't liking it at all like he literally was like I can't believe you're watching that and I was like this is fun I can understand why people maybe are a little insulted by that a little worried about that but again if you like Home Alone I think you might like this movie again nothing spectacular is the writing anything great no it's just people it's a home invasion movie <coughs> and the little girl <coughs> excuse me murdering people but it's fun. It, it is. It's, it's not quite a horror movie. It's more of a suspense. But it's very gory and just over the top ridiculous. I don't really know what else to say about this one. For what it is, it's fun. Uh, I, I enjoy it. Is it a great movie? No. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think what else to say about it, really. There's not much else to say about it. I don't know. I couldn't. Besides Becky, I couldn't tell you who any of the characters are. Couldn't tell you anything that happened to him. I don't know their backstory necessarily. It's a fun movie. I enjoy it. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this one, but it is fun, and I enjoy it. I, I keep saying that over and over. 
I'm gonna give this one a six out of 10, guys. Is it anything amazing? No, but it's fun and I enjoyed it. I think I've said that six times now. It's a fun, enjoyable movie, guys. I, I, I don't need to say any much more about it, but it's a fun, enjoyable movie. If you like Home Alone, check this one out. Next up, guys, Wrath of Becky. So this one takes place, what is it? A couple years, well, ha yeah, a couple years after the first one. Um, and like I said, I had no clue that this was a sequel to the first Becky. I thought this was just a movie called The Wrath of Becky. Um, went into the theater, the movie started, and she's giving the monologue of how she killed a bunch of neo-Nazis, blah, 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 blah. And I went, holy cow, this is a sequel to Becky. Um, and I'm happy to say I enjoyed this one just as much as the first. Um, plot is a little bit different this time. This time her dog has been kidnapped. Kind of like John Wick. Is a, it's kind of what it is. Uh, it's also very violent and gory, like John Wick, except this is gorier. Um, this time around, it is Sean William Scott who is leading a group of guys who are... Again, it's... I think I forget. Are they neo-Nazis? I think they're all neo-Nazis. Kevin James was a part of this group that... It does that thing where in sequels it goes, huh, this is going on the entire time. Again, guys, this is Home Alone with a teenager. And it's fun. Is it anything amazing? Nope. Are any of the characters incredible? Nope. Um, I will say there's a twist in this movie that I did not necessarily see coming. And I thoroughly enjoy the twist. It, it does have comedic moments, too. I should say that about the first one, too. There are some comedic moments about it. It is kind of a dark comedy at times. And it's fun. This one, I even liked the premise a little bit more because it's a dog. Who cares about her dad and, you know, her, her other family members? They can all die. It's fine. People can die. Who cares about people? Um, this one's about a dog. And, well, not about a dog, but it, it, her dog got kidnapped. She just wants to save her dog. And that's, that's awesome. So, I, again, it's crazy. Um, and, yeah, literally there's moments of this movie that are literally John Wick. Like, there's a moment towards the beginning of the movie that just felt so John Wick, in the sense that, like, I'm not even going to spoil it, but, yeah, it, it feels very John Wicky. Again, I don't have much to say about this one. What, Chester? What is it, buddy? What is it? He seems very stressed out lately. He's got an anxiety collar. He's taking anxiety medication. I have a little anxiety diffuser. He's got a little anxiety vest on right now. He's just... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with you. Huh, Chester? What's wrong? You don't come up? Come off my lap? What's it? What's it? Yeah? Um, so yeah, guys. Wrath and Becky. I, it, same as the first. I it, Give it a 6 out of 10. It's a, a teenage girl killing a bunch of people. If that's something that's not your cup of tea, great. Don't watch it. If it is, you might really enjoy this. I know I certainly did. Nothing spectacular, but it's a fun movie. I will tell you that. A lot of fun, really cool creative kills. That's all I have to say about that, quote Forrest Gump. Next up, guys, um, season three of Dave. Now, I remember watching the first season of Dave during the pandemic. Um, a friend that I had at the time, uh, got me onto the show. It was just hilarious and I loved it from the very first episode. Um, second season, what it came out in what, 2021, 2022 maybe? Was it last year? I can't remember. Anyway, came out. Um, I didn't think it was as good as the first. It felt a lot messier, but still really enjoyed it. And then this third season might be my favorite. Um, if you don't know what this show is about, uh, it's about a guy who wants to be this famous rapper. That's essentially the first season. Um, he's just working on becoming this very famous rapper. Second season is him doing all the things to become that famous rapper. This third season is him on the road doing his tour after he has become this famous rapper. Um, and it is such a funny show. It's meta. It's political but not it, doing it for the sake of comedy that works uh it, it has romantic elements to it um looking for love tour is literally the name of his tour and he literally is looking for the one he's looking for the love of his life on this tour he thinks because he's a famous rapper the girl of his dreams is going to come to him 
and he's gonna find love that way. Uh, and it's just such an interesting, creative, well-written, uh, excuse me, uh, show. And I absolutely love the show. Um, there's so many great cameos in this and cameos that don't feel like they don't belong there, specifically one in the last episode. There is such a great, not even a cameo, it's a full-fledged part from a certain big actor and it feels so perfect. Um, I don't want to say much more about that, but that last episode, the big big person that's in the, the episode is amazing. Um, as well as some other actors and stuff that show up in the show. The show is just so beautifully written. It's so funny. Um, it feels, again, talking about Smartless and how, you know, being a celebrity is not is all it's cracked up to be. This has some of that in there. Um, and this show's crazy, but I absolutely love it as well. Um, I think that's why I do love it, because it is crazy. And it is funny. It is, again, so well written. That's the big thing I can say about this. It is so beautifully written and just phenomenal. I absolutely love it so much. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see where they go with this because each season has been so different. And like the first season, like I said, was just him wanting to become a rapper. Second season is like him recording, writing this album essentially. And then the third season is just on the tour. So I'm curious to see what the fourth one is. Fourth one, he's just this huge megastar. I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, it seems like they really have this planned out and mapped out, and I really like that. I hate when a show is just kind of going and not sure where it's going to end up. It seems like they have a plan. It seems like they know how many seasons they want. Um, it's an FX show that's on Hulu. Uh, I recommend this one. It's, it's not for everybody, I guess I would say, but it's a very interesting show, and I really enjoy it. Um, I will go... 9 out of 10 on this one. I think there's just a few characters in this that don't need to be there. A few characters that are kind of annoying. Other than that, this is a really good show, and I highly recommend it. Next up, guys, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, new one came out, so of course I have to watch the original. Uh, this movie came out in 2018. It would have been December 2018, and I absolutely loved this movie from the moment I saw it. I think I saw this movie like 13 times in theaters. Um, it won Best Animated Picture at the Oscars. It should have won, like, Best Picture at the Oscars because this was my favorite movie of 2018. I absolutely love this movie. Again, so beautifully written. So much love and care was put into this movie. This movie is the most beautiful movie I think I've ever seen as far as just the hand-drawn animation and such, like that going in with the computer animation. And it's so beautifully done. Um, I... I God, guys, the character in this the characters are so great. Spider Ham, Gwen, um, Penny Parker, Peter Parker, uh, the other Peter Parker. Just so great. So wonderful. Um, the villains, there's so many villains in this movie, and usually that's a scary thing. They did such a great job balancing the villains, making them all relevant, um, doing such a great job with all the characters in, the, in these movies. Um, the, the scene where he's on the skyscraper and he's, what's up, danger? I, I just love that. Scene. It gets me emotional. It's such a great scene. Um, and that's another thing. This movie has so much heart while also being funny, while also being very serious at parts, um, inspirational at parts. It just such a phenomenal movie through and through. I just love this movie so stinking much. The sound design, the sound editing, the, the 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 score in this movie, the soundtrack. This is probably my favorite soundtrack of a movie ever. Every song hits hard, and it hits hard in the perfect sense. Everything from the What's Up Danger, it's just like a perfect song for that, to even start a riot when they are up on the ceiling, going from corner to corner, hiding from the roommate. Is so perfect for that scene, and it works so well. Um, yeah, I just, I love everything about it. The the message of this movie, the, I just, I can't say enough wonderful things about this movie. Oh, excuse me. 
Um, yeah, guys, this is just so beautifully done, so masterfully done. So much love and care is put into this movie. And every single moment of this movie just feels earned. It feels necessary. It feels like it is there for a purpose. And I absolutely love that. And I just... Everything about this movie is just perfect. I have nothing to say about... Negative to say about this movie. This is such a perfect movie. I think I've talked about this movie before. But... God, this movie is just so good. So incredible. It gives me the feels. It makes me happy. It makes me laugh. It makes me cry. I just... I love this movie so much. The relationship between every character is just so perfect. Um, yeah, guys, 10 out of 10 for me. This is just such a perfect movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just insane. Who is that character? Oh, that's Spider Noir. He looked weird for a second. But, yeah, guys, all these characters. The voice the voice cast, too. Nicolas Cage as as uh, Noir is great. Um, Jake Johnson as uh, uh, Peter Parker so great. Um, is it Shamik Moore as Miles? Perfect. Uh, Haley Steinfeld as Gwen? Amazing. Just all around the board. Fantastic. Just amazing. I love this movie so much. The colors, the visuals, just everything about it. Just beautiful. Such a perfect movie. Going on to the sequel now, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Um, this one pretty much picks up, well, it's a year after the first one. Um... And there's not a lot I can really say about this movie without spoiling it. Um, I really, really like this movie. It's not better than the first, in my opinion. There is... This movie, first of all, is 2 hours and 20 minutes. The first 20 minutes of this movie has no miles in it. And I think, for me, it, it slowed the movie down immediately. I was just kind of waiting to get back to miles, essentially. Um, it focuses on a different character right away. And I think if you had put that 20 minutes into a different part of this movie, it would have flowed a little bit better. But instead, they did it towards the middle. Um, and the first hour of this movie, not a whole heck of a lot is essentially happening. It's a lot of character building and talking um, between characters. Um, you know, there's still action and stuff like that going on, but the big stuff doesn't happen until about an hour in the movie. And you feel it with this one. It's not necessarily boring. All the stuff on screen is still great. Uh, it's just, I, I, I felt that two hour, 20 minute runtime. And I think part of it could have been just taken out. I think part of it should have just been moved to another section of the movie and it would have worked a little bit better. Um, lots of new characters this time around, uh, lots of cameos that, that feel necessary still. They don't feel like they're just thrown in there. Um, lots of interesting things that I wasn't expecting. I will say there is a twist in this movie that I, I, the minute it happened, I went, well, that's what's going to happen. That's the twist. And it, I was correct. Um, lots of little things that I noticed that immediately I was like, that's the twist. Um... If you were going to this movie to see Spider-Man Noir, see uh, Peter Parker, Penny Parker, the, the old crew back together, you're not getting that. Um, even Peter Parker with his baby there, they're not in the... Uh, uh, it's not really a spoiler. He's not even on the poster. Spider-Man Noir, Peter Parker do not even have a single line in this movie. They're really not in the movie. Um, so if you're going to the movie hoping for that, you're not getting that. Um, it was kind of a disappointment to me. They did introduce some newer characters that are interesting still, but I would have liked to have seen Spider-Man Noir and Peter Parker into this. And it's weird they're almost not in there considering why, like, Peter Parker is back. Um, it's just interesting. I, 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 it feels like 100% they kind of wrote those characters out so that they could be in the third, so they didn't have to pay Nicolas Cage, and uh, I forget who the guy is that voices Peter Parker. A little more well-known names. I feel like maybe that was part of it. I don't know that for sure, but it does feel like that. Um, once again, guys, it is so beautifully designed and animated, and there's live action mixed with computer and the hand-drawn, and just, it is so beautiful. 
again, some amazing shots in this movie. Nothing to me, though, that was better than that skyscraper screen that I was talking about. The soundtrack in this is here, but it is there, but it's not there. There, I didn't leave the theater humming any of the songs. I could not tell you a single song from this movie. Um, it feels like they really went down as far as the soundtrack goes, which was kind of disappointing to me because that's something that I love so much about the first. And the second movie didn't... I mean, like, the first movie, Full Flunge, like, almost used the entire song of What's Up Danger in that one iconic scene. And this movie doesn't really do that, which isn't a negative. That's more of expectations for me. It was just I wanted that soundtrack, and it wasn't there in this one. I'm not taking off points for that, but that was something that I, it was kind of disappointing for me. I really wanted that soundtrack there. Um, what else can I say about this without spoiling stuff? It is crazy. It is bombastic. Um, I've seen it twice. It got better for me the second time. I, I think I wasn't as overwhelmed. There's so much going on in this movie. This, this does not feel like a kid's movie at all, even though it's PG. And I, there was kids at both screenings, and I could tell both times that kids were kind of getting, it, it's too long for kids. But this is kind of a movie for adults at the end of the day. It's just one that kids can kind of go to. There's a lot of adult themes in these movies and such that, you know, kids are not going to understand. Um, so yeah, it, it, I really like this movie. Really, really do. But not quite as good as the first. It's a little underwhelming compared to the first for me. Um, who knows? Maybe it'll grow in time, though. But as of now, not quite as good as the first. Still really enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It is still a really good, good movie. I absolutely love it. I think it could have been a tad bit shorter, or even if you just mixed up the scenes a little bit, because it starts just kind of slow. It, 20 minutes before the actual logo pops up, and it just... Maybe a little less, and it would have been fine. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I really enjoyed this movie. Like I said, I've seen it twice now. I'd like to see it for a third time. Yeah, this movie's just awesome. It's crazy. Such a good movie. Uh, if you like the first one, if you like Spider-Man, go see this movie. Such a good movie. Next up, guys, you hurt my feelings. Um, I am a big Seinfeld fan, so I'm a big Julia Louis-Dreyfus fan. Um... And the movie she did with this director, Enough Said, I didn't love that movie. I thought it was fine. It was good. Just nothing spectacular. Um, so I was kind of eh about this movie when I heard about it. But it was playing near, near me. It was playing in my theater. And so I went and saw it. Um, and I will say this. I really enjoy this movie. If you don't know what the plot is, it is a woman who is a author. She writes books and... She is writing this book, and she's really excited about it. She wants it to get published. I'm sorry, I have, like, this weird thing on my thing, and I think it just is it. Ouch, it hurts. Anyways, guys, uh, she writes this, she's writing this book. She's trying to get it published, and she overhears her husband talking to uh, his friend about how he does not like this book even though he has said many different times that he likes this book quite a bit. And it hurts her feelings. She gets very cranky and crabby about it. And it's, it's, a, it's a comedy, really. It's a dramedy. I'd say it's a dramedy. And it is just a movie about the little white lies that we, we tell people. And should we be tell, telling people these white lies? Should we not be telling these people these white lies? And I absolutely love this movie. It is something so relatable. We have all told people white lies because we didn't want them to react a certain way. We didn't want to hurt their feelings. We didn't, you know, we just, not everybody needs to know everything. Um, as a manager of a restaurant and bar, I really, I really, really understand that. Like, there are certain things employees just don't need to know because... That's just the way it is. Ouch. I don't know what this is, and it really hurts. I think it's just a zit, but, like, damn, it hurts. Anyways, guys, um, yeah, I, I, this is just a movie that really related to me. Because I know, I know that, that not everyone needs to know everything, and sometimes you just need someone to believe in you and not tell you the truth. And 
I just found this movie so wonderful and relatable. I found so many great, funny, amazing moments. Um, there is moments with this with their son in this movie that, again, things I've really felt, things kids can really feel for as well. Um, this movie's just very relatable. It, it feels very real world and absolutely enjoyed this movie. Um, there's not a lot, a lot to say about it. It's very well written. Characters all feel very real. The issues they're going through are all very real. Um, even though it is something like an author, you know, not all of us are authors, but we can still really relate to this movie. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I absolutely recommend this one. I think this might be, as of now, it is in my top 10 movies of 2023. I, I really do enjoy this movie a lot. I think it was so well written, so beautifully acted. Um, it's an hour and a half movie. It's nothing long, nothing crazy. But it hit home in the sense of what it was trying, to, what it, what, what the message of the movie was and such like that. And I, I thoroughly enjoy this one. If you haven't checked out You Hurt My Feelings, I think you should check it out. It, it's such a relatable movie and it's very different than you know comic book movies that we've talked about or anything like that and it is a comedy while also being a drama which is cool it kind of you know slashes off two boxes there of things that you might want to be watching in a movie so um only issue I maybe have with this movie is moments that are a little cartoony at times um they go a little too far over the top a little too dramatic um but it's it's trying to make a point I just think it did it it didn't need to do that so yeah um I'll go nine out of ten for this one it's a really good movie. You guys should check this one out. Next up, The Boogeyman. Um, this is based off a short story by Stephen King, um, which is essentially, I think, like the first 10 minutes of the movie. Um, and from there, it's kind of different and original stuff. Um, this is a movie that, again, I didn't really know about until I literally saw it on the Regal app. And... You know, so I just went in to see it, and I was kind of pleasantly surprised by this one. It, it it does have a lot of the horror tropes, the jump scares, such like that. Um, the boogeyman looks really bad. It's not the best CGI creature in the world that you've seen, but it is interesting. Um, the The movie is about a a family. The mother has recently died. The father is this therapist. And they're kind of trying to, they're, they're grieving and trying to move on from this tragic event that happened. And the two main girls are really the main characters of this. And the ones dealing with the, the, the boogeyman, I guess you could say. And they, they do a really great job acting performance-wise. They, they're both fantastic. Um, the use of light in this movie is fantastic. That little nightlight moon ball that she has there is really really cool i absolutely love what they did with the lighting there the ending though of this movie takes place like in a basement and it's very dark and you can't see anything and it doesn't work the finale of this movie is just not very good in my opinion but the movie itself does have some interesting scares it does have some really good suspense um i did like the characters it's a pg-13 i think it's pg-13 yeah pg-13 horror movie for a pg-13 horror movie it's pretty scary i would say it it did have all the things that you see in a, a horror movie, though. I mean, there's nothing super new here. But you can tell behind the scenes they cared. And they wanted to do really well with what they had. And I think they did do pretty well with what they had. Is this the most amazing movie? No. Is this going to be in my top movies of the year? No. Um, but I enjoyed myself watching this movie. Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this one, guys. It's nothing spectacular, nothing amazing. But if you like horror movies, I think this is one you can go check out. It is, it's fine. It's, it's, well, it's not even fine. It's better than fine. It's good. It's, it's good. It's just nothing amazing. It's not changing the genre in any way, but it does do some cool, interesting things that I really liked about it. Um, there's a lot of conveniences that happen in this movie, but again, that's kind of all horror movies. It's fine. It's good. It's good. It's better than fine. It's good. Um, I'll give it a... You know, I'll go 7 out of 10 on this one. I enjoyed it enough. Um, will I ever go see it again? Will I ever see it again? I don't, I don't know about that. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It's fine. It's good. 
It's good. Better than fine. It's good. I keep saying fine. It's good. 7 out of 10 is, is a good score. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Some decent scares, some lighting issues, and just some cheesy moments at times. The tr horror tropes. It's good. I recommend it. Go see it. Next up in our last one, guys, Transformers Rise of the Beast. Now, um, I have had a very... Uh, I've had a I've had a relationship with Transformers. I, I enjoy the first Transformers. I hated the second one. The third one's fine. The fourth one is garbage. The fifth one is garbage. Um, Bumblebee really good. And now we have this one. Uh, I have no relationship to the Rise of the Beast TV shows. I know nothing about the cartoons or anything like that. This is all starting from the Michael Bay 2007 movie. Um, so I was excited to see this movie. Stephen Cable Jr. directed this one, the guy who did Creed 2. Uh, Michael Bay is not doing it. That made me feel better. It's coming off of Bumblebee. And I was really excited to see this one. I enjoy this movie. Um, I'm not as big a... The screen I went to, people were screaming, people were clapping, people were, like, jumping up in their seats, crying. Like, I was like... Yeah, no, I, I I wasn't I wasn't doing that. Um, I'm glad people like this. I will say this: the two lead characters that we have that are humans, they have much more to do than Shia LaBeouf did or Mark Wahlberg and the other Michael Bay movies. Um, they have a purpose, I guess. They're kind of just thrown in there, but there's a purpose there. Um, they have reasons for doing what they're doing. I'll give it that. Um, they're just kind of there to be there. Um, they do they do stuff, though. They don't just scream Optimus and call out for help like little whiny babies. They, they do something, and I think that's cool. I will say that. The Transformers all look great. The special effects look incredible. Um, the story itself, though, is the exact same story from all the other Transformers movies. There's a thing that they need to get. If they don't, it's going to destroy the world. Once again, that is the plot. and I'm getting bored with this plot because we've had... Bumblebee really is the only movie that doesn't essentially... I mean, it is kind of that, though. We've seen seven of these now with the exact same plot. And it's just... Eh. Um, I like that this one... This one is very globe-trotting. We go uh, quite a few different and unique places that are really fun and cool. Um... The, I don't know what they call them, the animal, animal bots. That's what I'm going to call them. Uh, they look really cool. They're not in the movie that much, but they have, it's not like Age of Extinction, where we're going to have dino bots and show them for two minutes. They're in the movie enough to say that they're in the movie. Um, so they're really cool. Um, I will say this, the finale is kind of eh. It reminded me of Avengers Endgame weirdly um and there's something that happens where it's just like oh okay so apparently there's that and only humans can do this because they're humans good thing we have humans here it's a lot of conveniences a lot of things that are just silly and dumb but it's a transformers movie um pete davidson as mirage i thought was great i thought it was a fun character I will say there's things that happen at the end of this movie that are just like, okay. You had to know that was going to happen. Um, Transformers seem to die and come back to life in every single one of these movies. And I, I just don't care anymore when they do die because I'm just like, yeah, and then they're going to live by the next movie. Um, so yeah, guys, I, I don't love this movie. I don't hate this movie. Beautiful visuals. I like the characters more this time around. Lots of conveniences, a lot of things that are just silly, but it's a Transformers movie. At the end of the day, what do we want to see? We want to see Transformers fighting a big spectacle. And this movie does have that. So I will say that. Um, I'm not amazed by this movie. I'm not in love with this movie the way people in my the screening that I went to were doing. They were just going crazy. One particular woman, I thought she was going to piss herself she was so excited so happy about this movie i enjoy it it's fine um 
I'm gonna give this one, I'll give it the same as the Boogeyman. I am the same thing with the Boogeyman. I, I don't know that I necessarily, I'll rewatch this when the next Transformer movie comes out, which I believe there's an animated one coming out with Scarlett Johansson and Chris Hemsworth or something like that, which I'm just learning about like this week. Um, interesting, I'll, I'll maybe rewatch some of the Transformers movies. Um, I've rewatched the first one many different times. The second one I've watched a few, rewatched a few times. Third one I've rewatched a few times. I've only watched the fourth and fifth one time, and I don't think I want to ever watch them again unless I'm extremely drunk. Because that's the only way to watch those movies. I really enjoyed Bumblebee. Um, I should have rewatched Bumblebee before watching this one, and I didn't. I kind of want to watch Bumblebee now. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to, because guys, actually, I'm going to head to The Flash very soon after this. I'm going to go see an IMAX. So um, I will have more movies to talk about next week. What are we at? Are we past the 45-minute mark? Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, guys, that is the last movie that I have to talk about today. I really enjoyed Transformers Rise of the Beast. It's it's good. Nothing spectacular. I don't know how much I want to rewatch it, but it's a 7 out of 10 for me. I really enjoyed it. Um, like I said, Flash comes out this week, so I'm rewatching a few of the DC movies. Um... Go to go see Flash today. Um, Indiana Jones comes out soon. I will be worried watching all the Indiana Jones movies. Um, yeah, and I'll hopefully have another episode out this next week. I'm not promising nothing. Life has been so crazy, so busy. Um, I have so many appointments. I'm working so much. A lot going on. Planning for vacation next month. There's a lot of things going on right now. So, yeah. Um, hopefully, though, I will have another video up real soon for you guys. Um, yeah, this was pretty much all new movies, so that's kind of cool, I guess. This shows you how stacked the box office is this summer, and it's crazy. It's just insane. There's too many movies coming out. I mean, this weekend alone, we have Elemental, The Blackening, Flash. Um, it's insane. I'm all, There's also an early... I'm going to go see another movie tonight. You heard my feelings. There's an early screening of that. Um, Paradise City, I think, that new Wes Anderson movie that comes out. Indiana Jones is coming out. I mean, <sighs> Mission Impossible's next month. Oppenheimer, Barbie. There's so many damn movies. So much to talk about. And of course, next month is my vacation month. So it's going to be crazy next month, guys. But we're going to get through it. it it's going to be a good, fun time. Um, See, so guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful, great day. Keep drinking your liquids, whether it's water, soda, uh, whatever makes you happy, guys. Drink it. Um, Hopefully your dog is doing great if you have a dog. My dog is, I'm worried about him. The vet's on Tuesday. It'll be all right. It'll be okay. It'll be all right. Um, so yeah, guys, I hope you guys have a good one. We will see you real soon, hopefully. Um, hopefully, you know, within the next week. Because I miss you guys.